Welcome to running on reddit. Like and subscribe, or you'll be running on fumes. Alright, so this didn't happen to me, but to my mom, or rather it happened in her workplace. My mom works for a well-known insurance company, and because of investigations, I didn't want to share, until a few months passed. Anyways, a lady who's basically a Karen but off-brand, who'll be called Karen to hide her name, is known to cause issues. She would complain about everyone, nag people, not do her work, and everyone at her workplace hates her. Some examples are, not going to work in the slightest of bad weather, so she wouldn't get hurt after a surgery she had like a year ago, yet refuses to go on disability, seemingly because it's not as bad as she claims, she'd be late a lot, would mess up, and make excuses to do her own thing. Here's where it gets interesting. The boss has enough, and she gets fired. Four days later, the boss realized that he hasn't been getting any mail. After the woman calls him to ask if he had her mail in his business P.O. box that he let her get mail at because she was a high manager and would collect the mail for him. Well, it turns out that the lady went to the P.O. box after being fired, forwarded it to her address, checking the box that says, is this a business address, and delivering all of his important business mail from clients and other things needed as soon as possible when they arrive. The boss goes straight to the police department to file a report for mail fraud, which is a felony in the USA, where this story takes place and has a punishment of up to 30 years in prison, a $1 million fine, or both. I don't know the specifics of what happened after that, but it's safe to say that the government doesn't like you abusing government services. I'm sure Karen knew the P.O. box had important business mail. Messing with their mail like that certainly deserves being reported. I'm a plumber and my neighbor has a little chihuahua who keeps coming in my yard and crapping. So we put up a 3 foot fence and yesterday I saw him pick up his chihuahua, put it in my yard, the dog dropped a load and then it went back to him and he picked her up. I was very disappointed in his actions and I wasn't going to say anything but then he called me and said that he needed his toilet fixed. So I went to his house this morning, and he was gone, and so is his wife, but her car was still there, so I fixed the toilet, and then I took a dump in the top tank of the toilet. Then I picked up his dog crap from my yard from last night, and put it into his wife's gas tank. Now we will wait. The dog's owner is a piece of work. When they get home I'm sure the crap will hit the fan. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever had a neighbor disgrace your lawn like this. Okay, this is a story which is based on the college degree I'm taking now, which is my higher national certificate. So as everyone knows plagiarism in college is a big no-no, especially since they are high cost qualifications and are no joke in careers, being a gateway qualification into many jobs. So last year I started my higher national certificate, I'm currently an apprentice with the company sending me on this course. I was a bit nervous as I had never met this class before, and they all weren't the same age as me, but the qualification is what I was there for. Anyway we started the year and I did surprisingly well, getting distinctions in my first assignments for engineering, the course I was sent on. I obviously started talking to some of my classmates, and made some friends. Now the plagiarist or Harry as I'll call him didn't seem such a bad guy, but he was a bit lazy, and it was obvious, in group tasks he would do minimal work and reap the rewards for it. Luckily I was never in his group. However, it was apparent to everyone, that I was exceeding in class, and would ask for some help with some things they weren't too sure of, nothing major just some slight teaching which I was happy to do. Harry never really asked me which I found odd, but I didn't think much of it. Fast forward about 3 months and we have a really difficult assignment in maths which even stumped me. I spent so much extra time at home, and even at work, to do the best I could on this. Roughly 23 hours I spent trying to complete this assignment, but I finally did it. I completed the assignment about 2 weeks early thankfully, so I had some time to catch up with work and other things at home. One week later I was back in college. Harry was going around asking people if he could see their work, which I knew he hadn't actually done any of the work, so he was trying for an easy grade. He asked me, and I politely declined as I put in numerous hours to complete this, and it wouldn't be fair on everyone else. He gets a little huffy calls me a pickle and walks off. 
I went out to the toilet and found as I came back Harry was rifling through my bag. I was about to confront him when I stopped and instead waited to see what he was actually doing. He pulls out my maths assignment and gets out his phone and starts taking pictures of my work. That scummy do nothing thinks that he can sit on his ass and not do anything and write off my hard work. So instead I get out my phone and record him taking pictures of my work. At the end of the day I immediately take it to the head of faculty, basically showing that he's flat out taking my work and claiming as his own. The head asks if I can send him the video via email which I gladly comply. Yeah it was snitching but this is college. I'm working my ass off for this. Extra hours and hard work to just have someone else freeload on the work. I turn up next week and Harry isn't there. I asked around what happened but was interrupted by the tutor. The tutor then announces that Harry has been removed from the course. Now I was confused as a warning is usually given then a dismissal. It turns out that Harry had not one, but two cases of plagiarism filed against him from a previous course, as well as behavioral issues. I don't know what happened to him after that, but I do know that I passed the first year with a decent grade, and I'm currently in my second. Surprisingly the lads on my course were actually thankful for what I did as they had enough of Harry as well. I'm currently doing very well and hopefully taught Harry that plagiarism really can backfire. Apparently Harry didn't learn his lesson the first time. He got what was coming. My girlfriend and I were looking for a place to live in a new city where she had just accepted an internship that didn't pay but would hopefully open big opportunities in the future. I travel for work so it's easy for me to live anywhere. We looked and looked but there was nothing in our price range so we increased a few hundred dollars and finally found a house. It was a bit pricey for what it was but we weren't finding any better places. The lease term was written as one or two years. We went ahead and submitted an application, which we were pretty confident about, since we have good credit and my job pays pretty well. We specified that we wanted the one year lease as her internship was only one year long. So a few days go by and we hear back from the agent, our application was accepted, but the owner wants $150 more rent than was advertised per month, since we were only wanting to sign the one year lease. I mentioned that it seemed unfair that she had taken our $100 application fee before telling us about this price increase, but I kept it pretty civil since I didn't want to burn a bridge for the only viable option we had. She assured me condescendingly that this was perfectly legal and that the owner was entitled to it since he might have to go through the rental process again in a year and since the rental market was so tight they could do whatever they wanted and she was right. We had no other options. So I told her that I was sorry and that I would call her back after discussing with my girlfriend. We were so frustrated. The place was so expensive for what it was, especially considering the condition that it was in. It really was tiny. The bedrooms were about 10 foot x 10, which made me feel a little claustrophobic. And the walls were very dirty from the former tenants who apparently had a couple big dogs living inside. There was literally dirt and grease smeared around the walls on the entire interior at about the height of a large dog. The yard was overgrown and trashed, but the lease stated that tenant would be responsible for all landscaping, and even specified that we had to keep the lawn in good condition. The lawn was about 2 foot high, completely dead weeds. All of this, we convinced ourselves that we could deal with, scrub the walls and paint, get a lawnmower off Craigslist and pony up the water bill for as erecting the lawn. Be minimalistic with our possessions. Hopefully the new paint would take care of the lingering dog smell. We had paid $50 each for the application fee and now felt as if we had been bait and switched but had no other good options and our deadline was coming up fast. My girlfriend was crying, and we both felt like homeless misfits that were terrible at life. I couldn't sleep in our hotel that night, but when I pulled up my bookmarked Craigslist housing searches I saw something new. A place that looked nice, and was about $500 cheaper than the house. Actually inside our original price range. I cautioned myself that it was probably a scam, but sent an ML anyways, and in the morning, got a phone call from a nice old man. I set up an appointment, and it was great, spacious, clean, and much cheaper. The landlord liked us, and we signed a lease the same day. We felt so lucky and happy. 
we were still angry about the other house. The agent had taken our $100 and raised the price on us, probably because she knew how tight the rental market was in the area and that we may not have other options. It had been just one day since she informed us about the $150 monthly price increase. I typed an angry email about how we were bait and switched, etc, but knew that it probably wouldn't get us our $100 back and that they would probably barely even read it. I asked my girlfriend if I should send it. She then came up with a brilliant plan for revenge, do nothing. First I deleted the email without sending it and we moved into our new place. A few days went by and I got a text message from the agent of the other house asking if we were still interested. I replied that we were still very interested and that we had gone on a trip but would be back in a week or so and would meet up to sign the lease then. She replied that since we were well qualified that would be fine as long as we were sure we wanted the place. So we started settling into our new place and enjoying ourselves. About 10 days later I received a call from the agent who seemed to have forgotten about us until then and she was frantic about getting the lease signed. I made up excuses. My girlfriend was very ill. We need a few more days. We are still 100% interested and I will call her on Monday to set up a meeting. On Monday I typed up an email. Sorry but we decided not to move in after all. Thanks anyways. My girlfriend and I smiled nervously together as we shot the email off. The phone rang almost immediately. It was the agent. I exchanged glances with my girlfriend and answered it, putting her on speakerphone. She was very upset that she hadn't shown her place for over two weeks and that her well-qualified tenants were dropping out. She pleaded with me to reconsider. What if I dropped the price back to the original price in the ad? She asked with desperation heavy in her voice. Um I pretended to think about it. I looked over at my girlfriend and she was silently laughing and hiding her face in her arms, overcome with emotion. I could feel the tension on the line as the agent hung on my next words. Yeah, sorry, no. I cheerfully declined. The agent was distraught. I hung up. My girlfriend's plan had worked perfectly. We felt avenged. Next time maybe she'll think twice before bait and switching. I'm glad that OP was able to get the place they needed. Hopefully the real estate agent recognizes how badly they screwed up and learns their lesson. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and turn on the bell or you'll be running on fumes. See you in the next video.